Hello organizers, I'm Celine. This is your update for the week of April 27th, 2015. This is my third video in a row. So you guys, I feel like you're getting to know me better. Um, today I'm gonna start with an apology. So over the last year or so, many of you have been in touch um, to point out discrepancies that you saw in our progress map. Uh, so some of you would say, for example, you know, I know that we've hit that polling division or, or our riding numbers should have gone up and they didn't. And so over the last few weeks, we've been digging into um, the nitty gritty of that. So how the progress map was set up um, and how it's, it's working on a regular basis. And unfortunately, we found um, a couple glitches, some persistent issues um, with the numbers and how they showed up. So um, the most significant of which had to do with the original targets um, that were showing on the map. So a small, understandable human error um, occurred in you know last year when we were setting the map up. And as a result, if you go to the map today, um, now that it's been largely fixed, you, you may notice that some writings, your, your target number um, is a little bit larger than you thought. So some writings, um, I'm sorry to report, have a little bit further to go to reach that 15% threshold. Now, um, we don't want to let this get us down uh, because we have done some incredible work over the years. So um, two things that we've done to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, are firstly, you know, we realized that at the beginning of the year we didn't necessarily have capacity at the organization to check our work on data because we didn't have a lot of people who had that skill set. So in communications, for example, anytime an email goes out, we have two or three other people who take a look at it and check for spelling mistakes and blind spots and all the things um, that, that we do when we're, when we're crafting something. Sometimes people make mistakes. So we have checks in place. Um, so now any of the data that we're using or basing decisions on or operating around is going to go through a couple different sets of eyes. Um, so we're testing and proofing and, and truthing, I guess, our, our data work um, from now on. The second thing that we're doing is um, we realized that we're sort of relying on this one tool too heavily in our work. So um, we are every Friday, starting last Friday, sending out um, to our core provincial and regional teams the actual numbers. So the raw data saying, you know, how many supporters um, we have in every single writing across the province so that if there are discrepancies then we'll, we'll pick up on them really quickly because we're checking for the data in two places now in, the, in our main database as well as on the map. Um, so those are, those are two things moving forward that we are, um, we've committed to doing um, so that this kind of issue doesn't pop up again. I am sorry for some of the frustration that the map has caused. Um, but like I said, I, you know, I think that the work that we have done over the last year has been um, wonderful to watch and to be a part of. Um, for example, you know, we, we knocked the municipal election out of the park um, at the end of last year. We're seeing the results of that um, this year with politicians who are local politicians who are standing up for our interests. Um, the best example of that is uh, last Friday in Vancouver, um, the National Energy Board and Coast Guard are on a tour of, of BC municipalities. They were in Vancouver and, and the mayors had some choice words for them. Um, our favorite is from Michael Smith um, from West Vancouver who said, apparently our oil spill response is launched by a boater out for a gin and tonic um, and not the Coast Guard. So just to give you an example, that kind of courage that we're seeing from our local politicians really is, is coming from you. So they're, they've been given a mandate and they're being held, held accountable um, by people like you who are, who are working hard and, and flexing those democratic muscles. Um, you know, we've also, we're way ahead of schedule on the federal election, our, our website and the handbills um, and all our materials are about 80% done. So, you know, things are looking really good moving into the federal election. 
We've gone through all of our systems. So making sure that we know how we're, we're going to, what tools we're gonna to use to get out the vote and what that's gonna look like. We've also added capacity in the field. Um, we hired three new provincial organizers, um, which is a total of five. So we have five provincial organizers across the province um, working to, to build our field capacity. And starting in May, I'm happy to report, we have seven summer students joining us. So seven bright-eyed, um, smart, capable young students are, are gonna come join our teams and help boost our strength. Um, so that's exciting news. Congratulations. Um, couple of housekeepings for, housekeeping um, issues for uh, this update. Number one is the organizer hub. We've got Aiden Abram on board these days um, doing great work fixing the organizer hub up and getting it ready for the federal election. So over the next few weeks you might find um, that new training material, training old outdated training material is gonna get taken down and new stuff is gonna get taken up. So if things look really different, that's what's going on there. Um, second, you might notice new hand raisers popping up being assigned to you um, as he's going through and just sort of cleaning out um, a, lot of, a lot of things on the organizer hub. Um, you might also notice that you get a bit of a boost um, this week as we're sending out an email to our supporters around the Mike Duffy scandal. So watch for that and our ask there is for people to join teams. So you might get a little bit of a, a boost of people wanting to join. So look for that. Um, and then lastly, next time you do go onto the map, um, you'll notice a couple things, so, you know, some, some different numbers showing up, um, as well as the color scheme. So, 10% of men are colorblind and can't distinguish between red and green, um, including our executive director and one of our provincial organizers. So, we've changed that color scheme to yellow and purple, um, which are also nonpartisan numbers. So, now everybody can see it clearly, and um, hopefully that will work for everybody. And lastly, you know, if you have any questions about the map or numbers, don't hesitate to give me a call. Um, I know that this might be a small setback, but I, I think that overall our network is, is stronger and larger and that we're just building, you know, a movement that will last in BC. And uh, so thank you for what you're doing. And uh, again, get in touch if you have any questions. My email, if you don't have it, is celine, C-E-L-I-N-E, at dogwoodinitiative.org. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your week, and I promise that you won't see me <laughs> on these updates for another couple of weeks. Um, it'll be someone else's turn. So have a good day.